and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our English news edition coming to you from Canal Algérie. I'm your host, Mesa Dumas, to the headlines. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, receives Nasser Al-Khalifi, the Chairman of Qatar Sports Investments and the Media Group. Tunisia commemorates the 64th anniversary of the Saqiyat Sidi Yusuf events with a firm determination to further upgrade bilateral cooperation, notably in the border zones. And Mustranam is witnessing an unprecedented activity in sorting out the freezed investment projects in line with the high authorities' guidelines. Those were today's headlines. First in our news, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, received on Tuesday Nasser Al-Khalifi, Chairman of the Qatar Sports Investment and Bein Media Group, currently on a visit to Algeria. This meeting aims to boost cooperation between Algeria and Bein Sports Network, especially with the upcoming Mediterranean Games to be held in Oran province. The meeting took place in the presence of the Principal Private Secretary Abdelaziz Khalaf and Communication General Director Kamal Sidi Saeed and Qatar's Ambassador to Algeria Abdelaziz Ali Ahmed Naimat al Naima. I was honored to be received by the President of the Republic. The meeting was very interesting and fruitful. It's the beginning of cooperation with other companies like BN. Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Ayman bin Abdurrahman visited Tunisia on Tuesday to commemorate the 64th anniversary of the Saqiyat Sidi Yusuf events, where the blood of the Algerian and Tunisian peoples were intertwined. More details with Manal Ammari. Prime Minister, Finance Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman visited on Tuesday the border town of Al-Kaf in Tunisia, where he was received by the head of the Tunisian government, Najla Boudan. He was accompanied by the Interior Minister Kamal Biljoud, as well as the War Veterans Minister Lai Derbiqa. The Premier and the head of the Tunisian government gathered in front of a commemorative stall constructed in the memory of the victims of these events and recited the Fatiha or the opening chapter of the Holy Quran. The premier and his Tunisian counterpart visited an exhibition with photos and historical documents which displayed these events where the blood of the two peoples ran down the locality of Saqiyat Sidi Youssef. In a keynote speech, the Prime Minister stated that this visit to Tunisia is part of the President of the Republic's will to make the Algerian-Tunisian relations exceptional. <laughs> Our presence among you to celebrate this momentous event, following the President Abdel Majid Taboun's instructions, who ensures that relations with our Tunisian brothers are exceptional due to the links of fraternity, history and common future. The development of the border areas between our two countries will be at the center of the consultation and permanent coordination between our governments through the establishment of new visions and mechanisms, as well as the launching of innovative development projects that will benefit the inhabitants of these regions. On this occasion, I would like to express my satisfaction with our bilateral relations, worthy of being a model to follow in terms of agreement. These relations constitute a solid cornerstone in building a renewed regional space that is more inclusive and efficient in a regional and international environment that is experiencing accelerated events as well as challenges, some of which are aimed at undermining the stability and security of the region in particular. The same willingness was expressed by the Tunisian president via the head of the Tunisian government, Najla Boudin. 
Our meeting to celebrate this memorable day to reaffirm the sincere willingness of President Qais Saeed and Abdel Majid Taboon to consecrate this exchange and cooperation tradition and raise these relations higher. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Algeria for supporting Tunisia and continuously ensuring that our country is provided with all forms of assistance and support and thus devoting the exceptional relations and values of solidarity and fraternity between our two brotherly peoples. On the sidelines of these commemorations, the Premier Ayman bin Abdurrahman met with his Tunisian counterpart Najla Boudan to discuss bilateral relations and ways and means to strengthen them in all areas. Following the official commemoration, the Prime Minister, accompanied by a delegation, visited Sukharas province, where he kicked off several projects. Ayman bin Abdurrahman also inaugurated many achievements in border municipalities, including the gas connection of 3,000 families in five border municipalities, with a transaction cost of 135 billion cents, as well as an opening to traffic of a road section of 22 kilometer and a 45 kilometer road linking Al Haddad to Sukharas. Let's talk energy. The price of a barrel of brand from the North Sea is settled around $90.25. This figure is close to the recent peaks of black gold. Is this increase a long-term one? And how can Algeria benefit to the maximum of it? Letitia Sidqawi will tell us more. The price of black gold has soared to more than $90 a barrel, a rise explained by several factors, according to energy expert Morad Bukhur. It turned out Omicron is not as dangerous, so the economic recovery has become a much concrete hope. And if you add to that the geopolitical crisis, first of all Emirates which were attacked with missiles from Yemen, then Russia that threatens Ukraine, all of this has provoked the change in the market that brought the prices to $90 per barrel. Is this surge in oil prices sustainable? Now, if you believe some experts, we are steadily moving towards a three-digit price. However, I am more reserved. In the current context, the price of oil should stabilize at this level, but it also depends on the geopolitical situation and certain circumstances. In the meantime, the rise of prices will go on until the end of the year. According to experts, Algeria must seize this opportunity and take advantage of this price increase to diversify its economy and exports. The increase of prices is beneficial for our country. We should consider it a window of opportunities that can close, but we need to take advantage of it to diversify our economy. This shouldn't bring us back to importing fruit. We have a window of opportunities. We should be offensive. It should be a key to development. We need to reconsider our oil development, taking into consideration the heavy changes currently happening. It goes without saying that the surge in black gold prices will make it possible to revive many investment projects. Asked about a possible resell by Madrid of Algerian gas to Rabat, taking advantage of the new agreement, the oil expert Murad Perer had this to say. There are a lot of exaggerations. First, the gas supply to Spain is delivered within a contractual framework. This contract contains a destination clause. The 10 billion cubic meters that are transited through the pipeline are intended strictly and absolutely for the Spanish market. These volumes are sold at a price that is indexed and negotiated on the basis of indexation to oil prices. On the other hand, you have a spot market where the price of gas changes from day to day. The price on the spot markets, for example, in the month of December is $30 per million BTU. On December 21st, the price has reached the level of $60. The spot market is subject to fluctuation, given that there is an Asian demand that is moving all the balances. Around 40 operating permits have been granted to investors in Mustaganem province, enough to create more than 3,500 jobs. Obstacles were removed by the mediator of the republic. More details with Raniel Bahri. This industrial equipment was blocked for two years for administrative obstacles. But the decision to remove these hindrances was beneficial for this investor from Mostaganem province who has just obtained the operating permit and embarked producing. 
I thank the President of the Republic for his decision. We have been waiting for this license since two years, but finally we obtained it. Another investment, this time in the municipality of Fernaca in Mostaganem province. This factory specializes in reinforcing construction bars using modern techniques. However, this economic operator has been blocked by long license process. The decision of the President of the Republic to grant operation and conformity certificates to encourage national production gave us hope to resolve our situation. This factory is a new achievement for this province and will contribute to create jobs. This plant initially employs around 30 people. We aim to extend our activity and reach 100 employees. We apply the guidelines of the President of the Republic. We carry out several field visits to all industrial units to check the difficulties they face and grant them operating certificates as soon as possible. The province commission listens to the grievances of economic operators in order to remove all obstacles. More than 40 operating licenses have been granted for the benefit of investors and private economic operators in Mostaganem province, a fact that will create wealth and more than 3,500 jobs. To COVID-19, updates now, 610 new confirmed cases, 494 recoveries and 13 deaths were recorded in the last 24 hours in Algeria, according to the health ministry. Mosques are involved in the COVID-19 awareness campaigns, an example from Lagwat province, where a vaccination campaign is also organized in these places of worship. More details with Rani El Bahri. The mosques of Lughwat province have favorably responded to the awareness and vaccination campaigns against COVID-19, organized by local directorate of religious affairs and endowments in collaboration with civil defense. I'm on my third shot of vaccine after having benefited from two previous ones. I thank the organizers at this mosque, aware for the importance of vaccination. I think it's a very good initiative to have organized this awareness campaign in mosques. I think that vaccination is the only remedy. After Al Hasar prayer, I got vaccinated. This is a good initiative. Every Friday, we organize ourselves to raise awareness. Congregants get vaccinated against COVID 19. All the vaccines are available. Raising awareness in this mosque about the hard current health situation without falling into panic was at the heart of this campaign during which it urged on compliance with the health protocol and respecting barrier measures. We organized several awareness campaigns at the level of 37 mosques. We previously organized other vaccination campaigns to encourage people to be vaccinated. Since January 23rd, there have been more than 1,000 people vaccinated. Today, we have to abide by the health protocol, in particular wearing face masks in mosques and social distancing in coordination with civil defense units. The National Security Services arrested two people suspected of being involved in weapon trafficking. These individuals were active in a network of four people in Tiziwuzu province, and the weapons in question are three shotguns. The suspects were brought before the justice, which placed them under warrant. The Transport Ministry has announced the launching of a new maritime line linking Algeria to Mauritania to promote exports pursuant to the guidelines of the President of the Republic. Military operations continue along the Wall of Shame in Western Sahara. The units of the Sahrawi Liberation Army carried out new attacks against the Moroccan positions in the sector of Al Hausa. The Libyan parliament held a meeting with two candidates tipped for the post of prime minister at the head of the interim government ahead of the elections scheduled for Thursday at the end of the session that brought together 116 members. 
The two candidates vote to hold the elections as planned since they remain the unique solution for a peaceful settlement in the country. Iran and the world powers held talks in Vienna for another round aimed to revive the abandoned nuclear agreement. A progress has been reported from both sides. Negotiations are entering a critical phase, but a number of issues remain unsolved. Peace efforts are underway in Ukraine. To defuse tension, the French president affirmed following the meeting he held with his Russian counterpart that Russian forces would not ramp up the crisis near Ukraine's borders. Russia has denied any plans to invade Ukraine. However, it has built up more than 100,000 troops near its borders. In the meantime, the United States is threatening of imposing sanctions on Russia in case of invasion. That was it for our news edition. Thanks for tuning in to our program. Good night.